Welcome back. In today's video, we are going to present the concept of solving right triangles. In order to solve a right triangle, that means to find the measures of all the angles and all of the sides of the triangle. And we will use our knowledge of trigonometry. Uh, we can use the Pythagorean theorem and we can use um, our understanding of the degrees of an angle of a right triangle um, or of any triangle to, to help us out. So first of all, it's important to properly label the angles and the sides of our triangle. Our triangles will always be labeled with uppercase letters for the angles. So our angles will always be uppercase. And our sides will always be lowercase. And we'll use the same letters for the angles as we do for the sides. So let's say we have a triangle A, B, C. And we're going to solve, this is a right triangle. So I've got right triangle ABC. So our angles are labeled, the vertices are labeled with uppercase letters A, B, and C. Well, the side opposite angle A will be labeled with a lowercase a. The side opposite angle C, or in this case our hypotenuse, will be a lowercase c. And the side opposite B will be a lowercase b. So it's going to be important that you recognize lowercase is the side opposite of the uppercase angle. So to solve for the sides of the triangle, we'll use the appropriate trig function, sine, cosine, or tangent. So SOHCAHTOA will help us out. Okay. If you already have two sides, it, it would be okay to use the Pythagorean theorem because we're solving right triangles here. To solve for the angles, we can use subtraction, right? If we have two of the angles of a right triangle, we can always subtract that from 180 to find the third, right? The sum of all three angles will equal 180 degrees. And if we have the measure of only one angle or only the right angle, then we'll have to use the appropriate trig function, the arc sine, arc cosine, arc tangent, and use our, our calculator to help us out there. So that's going to be the, I have two of the sides, but I need the angle. And you'll want to make sure that your answers make sense. So since we're solving right triangles, we know that the side opposite the right angle is the hypotenuse. That's going to be the largest side. But the reason it's the largest side is that the right angle is going to be the largest angle. Okay, so if we have a small angle, the side opposite, well, I probably should have drawn this the other way. So let's give you a fighting chance here. If we have a small angle, then the side opposite will be the smallest side. If we have a medium size angle, then the side opposite will be the medium side. Okay, and it's obviously the converse is true. The medium length side will respond to the, will be, correspond to the medium sized angle. So something to keep in mind, make sure you check your answers, that your smallest side is opposite the smallest angle, your medium side is opposite your medium angle, and your largest side is opposite your largest angle. In more review, and this is an important review, we're going to review the angle of elevation. Remember, your angle of elevation is from looking straight ahead, whatever your horizon is, to looking up. So if you're standing here on the ground and you are looking, this is your horizon looking straight ahead and you are looking up in that direction, this angle here 
is your angle of elevation. From the horizon, looking up. You're looking up at something in a building, looking up towards the sun, looking up at the top of a tree. That is the angle of elevation. Okay? The angle of depression, that's from the horizon looking down. Okay? So oftentimes, you know, if we're standing up on a cliff, we're up here looking at something below, maybe down there. So let's say we're looking at a ship in the ocean. Well, our angle of depression is from our horizon, looking straight ahead, looking down. So that is the angle of depression, is here. From the horizon, looking down. So even in a situation like this, if we were looking underground, if we were standing here, looking down, that is the angle of depression. Okay, trying to dig to that, to that treasure that's underground there. Okay, so the difference in the angle of elevation and angle of depression from the horizon looking up versus from the horizon or your line of sight looking down. Okay, this is not the angle of depression. It's not in here. Now let's take a look at some sample problems with solving right triangles. Let's solve right triangle ABC if A equals 44.25, B equals 55.87, and C equals 90. Well, we know A and B must be sides because they're lowercase, and C is the angle um, because C is listed as uppercase, so that we know is 90 degrees. So let's take a look at our sample problems here. So let's label our triangle. We'll call that angle C. We know that's C. I'll put B up here and let's just go ahead and put A here. Um, so lowercase a, lowercase b. So that's 44.25. Uh, side b is 55.87. That seems to make sense for us uh, because it looks like side A is a little bit smaller than side B. Um, so that'll, that'll work out for us. So let's go ahead and solve for one of our angles. Let's find angle A. Well, Sokotoa will help us out with this. Uh, our reference angle is A, so we're going to work from here. We have the opposite and the adjacent. So we'll use the arc tangent. So the arc tangent of angle A equals 44.25 all divided by 55.87. So if we make sure our calculator is in degree mode, we can just put this information into our calculator. The arc tangent of 44.25 all divided by 55.87. And we will get that angle A equals 38.38 degrees. So angle A is 38.38. And then we can just do a little subtraction. We just need the complement of that. We've already used 90 degrees in our triangles. We only have 90 left over. So 90 minus 38.38 is 51.62 degrees, so angle B must be 51.62 degrees. And the only thing left for us to solve for now is side C, so I'm going to use trig again. Uh, I'm going to work with my 38.38. I'm going to work from this reference angle A. Um, I have if I'm going to use this, I can use cosine or sine. Um, I can do adjacent over hypotenuse or opposite over hypotenuse. I'm going to use sine. So the sine of 
0.38 equals the opposite, 44.25, over our hypotenuse, C. If I multiply both sides by C and divide by sine of 38.38, I get side C equals 44.25, all divided by the sine of 38.38. So if I put this into my calculator very carefully, 44.25 divided by sine of 38.38, I will get that C is equal to 71.27. So that is the length of side C, 71.27 using trig. Now I could have done the Pythagorean theorem, okay? a squared plus b squared equals c squared, which would be 44.25 squared plus 55.87 squared equals c squared. Well, I don't want c squared, I want c. So if I take the square root of both sides, the square root of c squared is c. So now I know C is equal to the square root of my 44.25 squared plus 55.87 squared. So if I put all that in my calculator very carefully, the square root of that entire quantity, and make sure you're squaring those, we will get 71.27, and there will be more, equals C. So that, we have solved that triangle, and that triangle seems to make sense, right? The largest side is opposite my largest angle, the medium side opposite the medium angle, and the smallest side is opposite my smallest angle. Sample problem two, the angle of depression from the top of a tree to a point on the ground 15.5 meters from the base of the tree is 60.5 four degrees. So the angle of depression from the top of a tree to a point on the ground 15.5 meters from the base of the tree. So I need a tree. So I'm going to draw my tree. I can draw a tree. A tree here. point on the ground, 15.5 meters from the base, and the angle of depression, that's that, the angle of depression is here, that's our theta from the horizon looking down, is 60.4 degrees. Okay, so all trees make a right angle. The complement of 60.4 is 29.6. So this angle here is 60.4. I use my trig to tell me I want to find the height of the tree y. So the tangent of 60.4 equals the opposite y over the adjacent 15.5. So then I know 15.5 tangent of 60.4 equals y. I can put this right into my calculator just the way it stands. Make sure it's in degree mode. Your calculator has to be in degree mode. And we get 27.5. Three meters high. So the height of our tree is 27.3 meters. And that does seem to make sense. The larger angle, 60.4, the larger side, 27.3, versus the 29.6 and the 15.5 length of that side. So that answer seems to make sense. Our final sample problem. The length of a shadow of a flagpole, 55.2 feet tall, so the 
flagpole's height is 55.2 feet, and the shadow is 27.65. Find the angle of elevation to the sun. So I've got a flag on a flagpole, and the flagpole is 55.20 feet tall, and the shadow, all shadows are found on the ground, is 27.65, and we want to find the angle of elevation to the sun. So the sun is up here somewhere. Our angle of elevation to the sun from the top of our flagpole. So we want to find that angle theta. That's our angle of elevation from our horizon looking up towards the sun. So I've got the opposite and the adjacent. So I'm going to use tangent. I want to find the angle. So the arc tangent of our angle theta is equal to 55.20 divided by 27.65, opposite over adjacent. We can just input that into our calculator. And we get theta equals 63.39 degrees. So that is our angle of elevation to the sun. And that does make sense. Um, we've got a, a right angle here that we got calculated, our angle of elevation at 63.39, which gives us about a 26 degree angle here. So large, medium angle, medium side, or a little bit larger angle, larger side. Smaller angle, small side. So that answer makes sense. And I also answered in the nearest hundredth because they gave us all our information to the nearest hundredth. So we will give our answers to the, the least accurate or the least precise degree or to the tenths or the hundredths. Since they gave us everything in hundredths, we were going to answer in hundredths. So that wraps up solving right triangles, and we will see you in class.